Today I want to make a map of Aspen wind currents. This is important to figure out because it will help me establish weather patterns on ESPA and in turn get a good reference frame for my biome distributions. Now before we can even have a discussion about the weather, I need to make sure you're all familiar with the Coriolis effect. Imagine a sphere. Now add two points to it. One on the half radius and on the full radius. If you start rotating the sphere, you will notice that both points complete the rotation at the same time. The outer point, however, has to cover a greater distance in the same time as the inner point, which means the velocity of the outer point is greater. On a rotating sphere like a planet, like the Earth or ESPA, it's much the same. All points in, say, Svalbard will be spinning a lot slower than, say, points in Tamil Nadu. Putting this on a flat map, we can see points closest to the equator achieve the greatest speeds, while the closer you get to the poles, the more they approach stationary. This applies to clouds in particular. If you are moving from the equator, they tend to retain their inertia, which will cause their trajectory to curve alongside the direction of the planet's rotation. And if you are moving from the pole to the equator, your trajectory will be bent against the rotation. Now if you have a low pressure area in the atmosphere, it will suck in air. Air from the poles will be drawn in like this, while air from the equator will be drawn in like so. This results in a circular motion that we can observe as a storm or a hurricane. Hurricanes in fact are nothing more than spinning low pressure areas due to the Coriolis effect. Now let's talk about the air currents. Warm air rises at the equator until it hits the tropopause. As warm air reaches the tropopause, it begins to cool and move north with the Coriolis effect deflecting it eastwards. This taken path is called a jet stream and can only be found near the tropopause. At a latitude of about 30 degrees on Earth, the air is effectively moving straight east and can't go further north. This results in a sinking zone where it cools and deflects westwards along the surface again thanks to the Coriolis effect. We call this atmospheric structure a cell, the equatorial one being the Hadley cell. At about 60 degrees in latitude a similar structure can be found, which is called the polar cell, and in between these two is the feral cell which connects them. On the southern hemisphere these same occurs, but flipped. On the line separating the cells where warm air rises, a low pressure area is formed. And where cool air sinks, a high pressure area is formed. Congratulations, you are now a meteorologist. Oh well, kinda, as this is how the system works on Earth. But ESPA isn't Earth, and while similar, the system will need a little bit of modification to work. ESPA has a slower rotation rate than the Earth, which means the Coriolis effect will be a bit weaker, causing the cell boundaries to shift slightly poleward. ESPA will still have three cells though, but they are marked at 35 degrees and 70 degrees. Additionally, ESPA's atmosphere is more dense, which will increase our tropopause height, the tropopause being the altitude where the troposphere transits into the stratosphere. Due to the atmosphere being more dense on ESPA, the tropopause will be much higher. Clouds on ESPA can theoretically form as high as 25 kilometers up compared to roughly 17 kilometers on Earth. Now I'm not gonna get into cloud formations for this video, but if you really want me to explore that, let me know in the comments. Also, the jet stream being weaker will lead to less extreme temperature differences across ESPA. Unfortunately, as we have already seen before, it looks very likely that ESPA will not be able to form polar ice caps, not to the extent Earth has in any way. Not really what I wanted for the planet, but sometimes in world building stuff simply isn't compatible like that. In effect, this also means weather will generally develop more slowly. Because of the reduced jet stream speeds, the air circulation will take at least twice as long as on Earth. Therefore, if there is a rainstorm, it will likely last for days. If it's sunny, it will be sunny all week long. And if it's storming, well you better strap yourself because you're in for a good while. This was in no way intended, but I quite like this idea of slow, long lasting weather phenomenons. On a more positive note, this means weather will be actually more predictable. Unlike the news, ESPA will actually have a way more reliable weather forecast. Done? 
Well, yes, yeah, sorta, kinda, but also not really. This is hugely oversimplified, of course. Planets have pressure centers which move over time and are influenced by the configuration of continents and a lot, a lot more. But frankly, I don't need to go that deep in. This will mainly serve to determine our biome placement. And given the fact that the NOS can't even tell me what the weather is gonna be like tomorrow, I think ESPA has already achieved a lot here. And that will be it for this video. I'm experimenting with some new upload formats as these videos can take quite a while to prepare. I have scripted three videos ahead this time. So hopefully I will be able to see you again in a new video sooner. Let's talk again next time about the Aspen Ocean Currents. Stay tuned.